Alright, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys. And today, we're going to be doing my full review of the Nexus 5X. And all the accessories that I believe you need if you plan on keeping a device like this for a long period of time. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Now, before we talk about the phone, I just want to talk about the accessories. So let's put the phone off the side for a little minute. Let's get into these accessories. So, along with the Nexus 5X, I bought two things. I bought a Type-C to Type-A USB cable from Yozone. And I bought the SUP Unicorn Beetle case from SUP Cases. And so let's talk about these. First off, this is important, this type A to type C USB cable is very important if you are going to be taking a lot of photos and videos with your device. Trust me, you're going to have to, you're going to end up offloading a lot of media to your computer or other devices. So that being said, out of the box, you only get a Type-C to Type-C cable. So if you want to offload your media to your desktop, you're going to need to get this Type-A to Type-C cable. And this is perfect also because it's a nice durable cable and the length. You wouldn't believe how many times I got frustrated at how short my cables were and how they get strained and they're easily snagged. With this nice beefy 6.6 inch um, Type A to Type C USB cable, that is not a problem, and it works perfectly. Now I did read up on this cable, and I saw that a lot of people were having issues where it stopped working after a week. Well, I've been using this for almost two weeks now, and I have not had an issue. It does, however, say when I plug my phone in, it says charging slowly. That is until I change it to um, data transfer mode. This is not something I would use to charge my device, although it could. It charges it too slowly. This is something I use strictly for data transfer, data and media transfer. And for what I use it for, this cable works perfectly. So, good job, Yozone. It's a decent cable. Now, throw this off to the side and let's move on to the next thing. Also, something that I bought with the Nexus 5X is this durable hard shell case here. And as you can see, it has a built-in screen protector. This is the Unicorn Beetle case by a company called Sup Cases. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that logo. There it is. But this is the Unicorn Beetle. And I don't know if y'all know. Oh, no, I put it in there. But I also bought this type of case for my Moto X Pure Edition. This case is, um, <clears throat> is essential when you plan on keeping a high quality device for long periods of time. This hard, durable plastic shell and this built-in screen protector here provide maximum protection for your whole device. That being said, and you still have all of your cutouts. Like right here, this one's for the Nexus 5X. You have your cutouts for the fingerprint scanner and the cameras and the LED flash and the laser autofocus. You have your things for your power button and volume rockers. You have your cutout for the USB Type-C cable and the headphone jack. All nice and precision cut. So this works out quite well. This also came with a belt clip, but I don't use that, so I just toss that. It's off to the side somewhere on my desk. Don't really use that. And pretty much, guys, this case 
and why I say it's, it's a must have and you need it because this is this provides maximum protection for your device and it is extremely durable. Now, prime example of this is I am in the process of doing my um, U grip um, car mount um, review and. This phone, along with some of my other phones, um, I've been testing with that. And while I was getting it positioned, this phone actually fell a ton. And my phone is in still perfect working order. There's no visible damage. There's no functional damage. Everything works, and it still looks as if I, the first day I got it out the box. That being said, this that's mostly what I would contribute to having this case on there. And that's why I believe that this case is a must-have um, for your device. So good job, subcases. This unicorn beetle, this is a beast. This is, this is a go. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on. Yeah, shout out to my boy Flossie Carter. Um... Moving on to the next thing here. Now that I got those accessories out of the way, let's talk about the device. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the build quality. Now, I must say, in terms of build quality wise, I believe that LG did a great job with this device. Now, I've had no issues with build quality. There's no creaking. There's no rattling. Everything works exactly how it's supposed to. The volume, volume rockers are nice and firm. There's no shape to them. But, if I had to say there was one downside to the build quality, is that the volume buttons are not textured. Now, I've gotten pretty used to that, being as I'm coming from a Moto X Pure Edition, and the volume buttons... And the power button is textured so you could differentiate between the two. So, uh, a little downside. I'm still, it's not really a problem. It's just now it's really hard to differentiate between them because they're both smooth. But, y'all know how that one go. You get used to it. But, in terms of overall build quality, I would have to say that this device is constructed quite well. And if I had any other gripes with it, it would probably be that this device is not as grippy as the Moto X Pure Edition. Now, it does have a nice non-slip te slip texture, and it does not slip out of my hand. But, being as I'm coming from a Moto X Pure Edition... Um, the texture that you get on the Moto X Pure Edition is um, pretty much second to none. And when you're holding that device, there's no way that that's going to slip out of your hand. <clears throat> but this being said, this doesn't slip out of my hand, but I just wish it had a little bit more texture to it. But you get used to that, and of course, a lot of my devices spend... Um, a majority of their life in your cases and I believe that the case actually provides another level of grip that actually works out very well that being said as I said earlier the build quality on this is quite good so let's move on now let's talk about the display in this guy so up front dead center here we have a 5.2 inch IPS LCD display and it has a pixel density of 423 pixels per inch. Let me let that focus guys. Sorry about that. There we go. Let that focus up. And as y'all can see and what I can say here is that this display is quite good. Outdoors it gets really bright and I have no issues with it and it's a really good display like no problem viewing angles are nice no issues well except for one now <clears throat> something that I noticed is that in absolutely no light 
when you power on your display, I don't know, it might just be mine, but mine tends to have a pinkish hue. Just for a couple of seconds while the phone gets going. I'm not sure what the reason is for that. But, it's not a big deal. Because, you know, I, I'm not sure what that is. But overall, the display itself is still a beautiful display. And, yeah, it's pretty good. So, let's move on. Now, moving on, let's talk about the hardware and software in this guy. Now, hardware-wise, we're running a Snapdragon 808 processor. Hold on. 808 processor right there with 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage. You have a 5 megapixel front-facing camera. You have a 12.3 megapixel rear-facing camera with LED flash and laser autofocus. You also have a fingerprint scanner, which um, Google is calling Nexus Imprint. Back up at the front here, you have um, one speaker down here, one front-facing speaker down here, and an LED notification light, which to my knowledge and testing is only white and blue. It might be multicolored, but from what I've seen, it's only gotten white and blue. And then you have your receiver up here, and you have you can't really see it, well you kind of can right there. You have your um, proximity sensor lights right there, as you can see, and your receiver. Um, Software-wise, we're running Android 6.0.1. Marshmallow, which is the latest version of Marshmallow, and I must say, aside from the fingerprint, it is a all stock version of Android right here, and as y'all can see, I have one fingerprint registered. So you get all of your stock Android features, you got your cloud print, you got your users feature, all that good stuff. You got the new layout for Marshmallow. So you got your accounts. You got your security. You got your users. You got your memory right there. And you got your storage. Now, as y'all can see, let me just make a note of this. Out of the box, you have about 10, almost 11 gigs of storage. Of which, I've used about 4.4 gigs. And that's mainly because I've taken a lot of video with this device. But you see, apps-wise, I've used almost 3 gigs. So, got to take that into account that although it says 16 gigs, out of the box, the most you guys are going to have is about 11 gigs. So, y'all remember that and take that into account. Another thing I want to note is that this is set up exactly like my Moto X Pure Edition and it's using it's using a larger majority of the available RAM now remember it said 2 gigs of RAM but of that because the system has to take some you actually get 1.8 gigs and as you can see I'm pretty much using 72 percent of that all the time but that being said the overall Android experience has been nothing but smooth and I've had no issues whatsoever when it comes to navigating or doing any daily task with the device so the software on this guy is uh, pretty good yeah so now moving on let's talk about some glitches stutters and crashes that I've had with this guy now in terms of that I really haven't had any crashes but what I've noticed is that under heavy loads and heavy multitasking or really heavy days when I'm doing a lot, the device tends to slow down just a little bit. And another thing that I've noticed is that when the device stays in standby time for a uh, long periods of time, that it gets very... Uh, uh, bogged down once you wake it back up 
And so one remedy I had for that is I had to reboot the device and then everything worked as it was supposed to. Other than those issues there, um, I've had no issues with the device. Now, <clears throat> that being said, let's move on. So, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the Wi-Fi in this guy. Now, Wi-Fi wise, this guy has 802.11 BGNN and AC Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi performance on this device has been it's been pretty great. Now, let me load this up here. I did a Wi-Fi test. And as you can see, this is my data speeds. I'm using this on T-Mobile. And right down here, these are my Wi-Fi speeds. Now, I've always told y'all that I, ha I get really good Wi-Fi in my house. And my Wi-Fi range is actually pretty far. I can still connect to my Wi-Fi um, out where my car is parked. So my Wi-Fi is pretty good. And it's nice to see a device taking full advantage of these speeds. So... That being said, that was just a particular um, app that I used. That was speedtest.net. That's what I used to test my Wi-Fi. And now let's go ahead and load up a YouTube video for you guys so y'all can see it perform in real time. And let's see. Let's just load up one of my videos so we don't have any copyright issues. Also, this would give you a sense of how the speakers perform and we'll talk a little bit more about the speakers in a little bit so let's just go ahead and let this load up and I'm going to turn the volume up matter of fact let's start low and we'll get high so Alright, let me turn it up to 50%. I'm going to sh show y'all uh, pretty much step by step how to install this ROM and everything you'll need. And then we'll go ahead and talk about the ROM and its features because I've actually been using this one for a while. All right. Actually, I've been using it for like a week. I think I'm going to take this past year, just over a week. So I think that's more than enough time to talk about the ROM. All right, now let's turn it up a little bit more. Franken 4 ROM for the Nexus 4. So, real quick, before I get into the good stuff, let's just go over the steps of how to install the ROM, and then we're going to boot the ROM up and talk about it. And now let's just so go forward so you can see how it loads. I believe it was this one. So... Alright, so as you can see, Wi-Fi wise, we don't have any issues with this guy whatsoever. Now, moving along, let's talk about the bands supported in this guy. And keep in mind guys, this is very important because in order to make sure that the devices you pick up work properly with your particular carrier, you have to make sure your carrier supports these bands. So I'm going to go ahead and read this off as slowly and as clearly as possible so you guys can hear it and make sure. So starting off, we have all the standard um, 2G and 3G bands. So the 2G and 3G bands and HSP, HSPA Plus band are 850, 900, 1800, 1900, um, 1700, and 2100. That's um, 3, 2G, 3G, HSPA+. Plus. Now, here's the more important ones here. Th these are the LTE bands. And hold on to your hats because there's a lot of them. So, LTE-wise, we have band 1, 2100. Band 2, 1900. Band 3, 1800. Band 4, 1700 and 2100. Band 5, 850, band 7, 2600, 
band 12, 700, band 13, 700, band 17, 700, band 20, 800, band 25, 1900, band 26, 850, band 29, 700. Now that was for, that was all the bands for US models of this phone. Now it's all the same for European and Asian models with the exception of they get a little bit more bands than we too, we do. So when it comes to Asian models, they get bands um, 40, which is 2300, and 41, which is 2500. And with the UK and European models, they, get, they also get, along with those bands, they get band 38, which is 2600, and band 40, which is 2300, and band 41, which is 2500. So, that being said, if you pick this guy up, this guy should work on any carrier, and you just want to make sure that it supports those bands. Or the particular carrier that you're using supports those bands. Now, that being said, let's move on and let's talk about data speeds in this guy. Now, as y'all have seen earlier, you get some pretty good data speeds with this guy. And I am actually using this guy on T-Mobile. Let me go ahead and turn my Wi-Fi off so you guys can see. And I am getting... um some pretty good service. As you can see, my bars are almost full. So data on this guy is not an issue. And just remember, all y'all do is make sure that your carrier supports um, some of those bands or a particular band and make sure service works correctly. Now, moving on, let's talk about the Bluetooth in this guy. Now, Bluetooth-wise, this guy uses Bluetooth uh, 4.1 or 4.2. I can't remember correctly, exactly, my bad. But Bluetooth wise, the Bluetooth in here works pretty good. Now I did have some issues trying to connect it up to my Moto X Pure Edition, but I think that was due to my Moto X Pure Edition, not to this device. But it paired up to my headphones no problem. So I had no issues uh, with Bluetooth sending or receiving files or pairing. So the Bluetooth in here was pretty good. Now, moving on. Let me turn off the Bluetooth real quick so we can save some power. Flip the Wi-Fi back on. Alright. Now, let's move on to the next thing. Now let's talk about the GPS in this guy. Now, GPS wise, guys, I would say that this device is pretty good. Now, right here, you can see this is a GPS test, and it locked on um, and got a 3D fix within seconds, and it's accurate up to 13 feet. And that was pretty good. That's pretty good. And I was using this for turn by turn navigation, and didn't have any issues. It locked onto my location very quickly and it navigated without errors. So, that being said, the GPS in this guy is pretty good. Pretty good. And you know, when it comes to me, the GPS is one of the mo most important parts of the phone, aside from the speakers, the camera. And the battery life, because I am not a directional savvy person, so I rely on my GPS a lot when it comes to turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So the GPS in here is actually pretty good. Now, moving on, let's talk about the speakers and the call quality in here. Now, speakers-wise, as y'all have heard from the Wi-Fi test, these speakers are actually pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, well, one speaker, not speakers. Sorry, you got one speaker and one receiver. But I did have one problem with these speakers, and y'all saw it in the Wi-Fi test. The speakers don't actually start getting much volume until you get to about, 
I want to say 25%. So until you get to 25%, you can barely hear them. So that being said, a large majority of the time when I was consuming media, watching movies, listening to music, without having headphones connected, I had to have, have this at 25% or higher. And I don't really like that. I don't really like having to blast out my speakers all the time. And I noticed, because when I noticed that on this device, I went back and I looked at my Nexus 4, and I noticed that my Nexus 4 has the same issue. So I don't know what LG is doing with that, but they need to really work on that because 25%, was it, 25% is not zero, okay? And you shouldn't have to um, bump up your speakers past 25% in order to hear the audio. So LG, that was a hit to you guys. Y'all got to work on that. But other than that, the speakers themselves do get quite loud and they are quite clear. Why do I keep saying speakers? I mean speaker. Speaker. The speaker itself gets quite loud and is quite clear. And speaker calls are quite good. I had no issues hearing the person on the other end and they said I was quite clear. And calls through the receiver are quite loud and quite clear as well. So I had no issues with the call quality or the speaker in this guy, aside from the volume. But, so you got pretty good speakers and call quality on this guy. Now, moving on, let's get into the cameras. Now, the video samples I will have in the video sample playlist. Right here, I'm going to just go through some of the images and talk about the interface. So let's get into this. Now, interface-wise, you got a pretty simple and straightforward interface. You have, um, right now it's on photo mode, and to get to video mode, you just swipe. Now it's in video mode. To switch between the rear and front facing cameras, you push this button here. How you doing, guys? And there you go. And now out of the box, because I didn't really touch anything, I just um, messed around with some of the resolutions. You have um, um, auto flash is on and auto HDR is on, but this camera also has a slow mode at 120 frames per second, I believe. And yeah. So that being said, some other camera features are panorama mode, um, photosphere mode, Lens blur mode, which kind of like blurring out the background, like something like it does on HTC devices, and then settings. Now, if we go into settings, you can see that in order to take full advantage of your full 12 megapixels, 12.2 megapixels, you have to shoot in 4x3 mode. I don't like shooting in 4x3 mode, I feel that it makes the um, the picture look a little letterboxy. I like to shoot in 16x9 widescreen. So in order to shoot in 16 by 9 widescreen, you got to bump it down to 8.3 megapixels. So, uh, you know, it's still good, but I would like to have taken full advantage of the 12 megapixels at 16 by 9 but it is what it is. So, moving on, you have to do the same thing for the front-facing camera here. And in order to take full advantage of that, it has to be... 4x3 at 5 megapixels, and in order to get widescreen, you have to shoot it at 16x9, it has to be 2.1 megapixels. Same thing. Uh, yeah. Now, in terms of video, you shoot, um, for the rear facing camera, you shoot in UHD, which is 4K, you shoot in 1080p, and you shoot in 720p. So that's pretty cool, and I will have the 4K samples and all that in the video samples playlist. Now, for the front-facing camera, you can only do as high as 1080p. So it would have been cool if you could have did 4K with the front-facing camera, but it is what it is. It's it, it's a yeah, y'all know it is what it is. You got what you got. That being said, you can also control the. Um, the resolution of the panorama mode so you got normal high and low don't really play with that too much so I just left it at normal I don't really use that at all and that pretty much is the camera the settings 
and the interface in a nutshell. So now let's get into some picture samples here. All right. So right here, I just had my um, my car painted and the headlights refreshed, and I I would say that the picture came out really good. A lot of these pictures came out really good. And now let's go to some low light shots. Alright, and now let's go to some no light shots so y'all can see how the flash performs. Let me flash through here real quick. Sorry guys. Alright, so this is with absolutely no light. Just using the flash on the device. And I'd say it did pretty well. Uh, same scenario. I uh, now went out to eat with my roommates. And it did pretty good here. You get, you're getting a lot of details here. Even when you pinch the zoom in all the way. You're getting a lot of nice fine details. That wall is like super green. It is. It is what it is. And then, y'all finally got me to do it. Start taking pictures of my food. It was very beautiful, and I saw an opportunity to test the camera. So, yeah. And man, the food was delicious. It looked quite beautiful. I almost didn't even want to eat it for a minute, but it was delicious. So, as y'all can see, um, I don't think y'all are going to have too much problems, if any, with this camera at all. But keep in mind now, everybody's usage is a little different. So, I was able to get off some nice shots, but I'm sure if y'all have a decent amount of light, there shouldn't be an issue. Now. That being said, that's it for the cameras. Let's move on. So, <clears throat> this would be the point in the review where I talk about the gaming. But you all know me, when it comes to Nexus devices, I don't really like to test the gaming too much. But I will go ahead and tell you all that gaming on this device was not an issue at all. And I actually tested quite a lot of different games and didn't have any issues but there is one thing you want to look out for here when you're playing a lot of games on this device and that is the fact that if you use a lot of big games the um, internal storage fills up quite quickly so let me go through the games that I tested and I just want y'all to remember that you're gonna have to make space for a lot of these bigger games so, all of the games that I tested on this device were um, Asphalt 8, Fruit Ninja, Subway Surfer, Dead Trigger, um, Real Racing 3, 